Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another Astro Chat episode. Today we are going to take a look at a slightly unusual idea. On Saturday morning I said to myself, I'm not doing an Astro Chat episode this week, even though I have two in my mind to do. One is the next 20 years, we are going to take a look at that. And the other one is to look at a corporation. I know one of you did ask that you'd like to look at a corporation and we're not going to do Australia, we're going to do something different. You'll see, and I think it's relevant for the times. So I'm going to get back to creating content that's relevant for the times. But this little insight popped into my mind on Saturday morning and I thought, ooh, I would like to do that. So why don't we take a look? Now this video will be relevant if you run planetary energy either in these houses, 12th house, 6th house, or you run planetary energy, 3rd house or 9th house. This will be particularly good if you run Rahu in Pisces or if you run Rahu in Jupiter. In fact, I would love to hear from you if you do run these energies. You can comment below and tell me if I'm in the ballpark with this concept. But why don't we take a look at the mathematics of fantasy. So where does fantasy live on a chart? It lives here in the 12th house. Okay, I've done videos about this before and I'll link those below in the description. In fact, I'll link all of the videos I've done before where I've talked about this particular axis. I think it was about three months ago where I had a whole bunch of insights into this axis. And yeah, uh, I'll link all of those below. So this is the next in that series, right? So 12th house of fantasy. This is where fantasy lives or fantasy thinking even lives in the chart. Now, what do we have here? We've got the sixth house and you know me, I always say it's important to read the line, read the whole line. Okay, so you might have just one planet here, but it's important to read the whole thing. So this is the sixth house of work. We could also use the word effort as well, but let's just use work for now. I think that's a, that's a pretty good word. Okay, let's also take a real life example. So Srinivasa Ramanujan, he's a good person to use for this because he had Pluto up there in the 12th house. He also had Mercury in the 6th and he had Jupiter in the sixth as well. But the main thing that I like about his chart is that he's got Mars energy flooding into that sixth house. Okay, there's a Parivartana exchange. So Mars is definitely present in that sixth house. And I believe it's that Mars energy that enabled him to really ground his fantasy. Now, what was his fantasy up there in the 12th? Well, we can see Pluto is there. So we can very confidently say that this man is going to have a very grand fantasy. He's going to have a, a, a grand dream, some kind of incredible, impossible dream, right? So that, and that's represented by Pluto being up there in the 12th. He's going to have a big dream. And he did. He wanted to express no less than the mind of God. Okay. So that's a very grand dream that he had. And it's because of the Mars energy that he was able to ground that dream into reality. Can we look at this numerically? I'm going to say yes, we can. So we're going to give the 12th house fantasy a figure. And because we've just talked about Ramanujan, I'm going to say a million. Okay, I want a nice big number. So let's call that a million. But you could have any whole number. You could have one, two, hang on, three, you could have any whole number you want, but we're going to work with a million. And what I figured out is that this house is a house of whole numbers, okay? Because this is a place of unity. This is where everything unites. So you're going to have whole numbers up here. Now this is a house of division, right? So what are the numbers that are possible here? Well, I, through contemplating all this, I discovered that, well, you could have the number zero, because you could put zero work in, right? But what else is here? What other numbers are here? Well, it's the house of division. So it must be fractions, okay? This house is full of fractions. I believe numerically 
You would never have a whole number here. You would have only fractions. So let's write out some fractions here. 0, 0, 0, 1. And then let's add another and another. Okay, so like this, to, to draw the fantasy down to earth. Okay, this is an earth house as well. So we want to earth Jupiter's energy. We want to earth it. We want to earth the fantasy. We want to bring it to reality. We want to make it real. So you have to put in work. So if you put in a little bit of work, you bring 100 down. Okay, you put in the next action. You draw down another 100. You do the next action. You bring down 100 again. And like this, you can make the dream come true. So Srinivasa Ramanujan, what would this look like? What would this 0 0.001 look like? Well, this might look like he went out and he bought a notebook. And then he did the next action, which is he bought a pen. And one of you rightly observed, I never put the cap on. <laughs> he put the, well, maybe he took the cap off the pen, okay? And then what's the next action? Right, this is all very mercurial. This is very mercurial stuff here. What are the things you do? What are the tiny little things that you do? Okay, to ground this big lofty idea. It's gonna take tiny bits of action. Okay, so, and it's gonna take thoughts. And he had Mercury here, but he had Mars. And that's the most important thing because who does well in this house? Who does really, really well? Okay, Mars. Mars is fantastic here, right? Mars the doer. He wants to make something real. He wants to do it. He wants to get it done. You know, these actions, that's perfect for Mars. Mars is great here. Who else does really well here? Saturn. Okay, Saturn performs beautifully here. Why? Because Saturn is the worker. Saturn's always working. So, you know, he can make stuff happen here too. Who else is good here? Who else can ground the dream? The sun, okay? The sun can ground this dream as well. The sun does really well here. And I started thinking about what if, oh, well, before I get to that, what are these energies? These are masculine energies. And look at that. Masculine energy is needed to do, to ground, to make it happen, to make it concrete. Who does badly in here? Venus. Venus, she's terrible here. She doesn't, what's she gonna do? How, how's she gonna ground the dream? She can't, that's feminine energy. Feminine energy can't ground a dream. But these can, these can ground the dream. Now what if you only have Mercury here? And that's it, you don't have any Mars energy aspect, Parivartana, none of that or whatever. Well, I tend to think that if you've only got Mercury in here, you would be fantastic at thinking about these dreams and you'd be fantastic at generating the dreams and thinking about them, but would you ever do anything about it? And I think, no, you might not, isn't it? You might just like the fantasy. You might just like that the fantasy is there. The other thing about people who run this kind of energy is that they love that. They love having a big lofty dream. That is actually the thing that they love. A good, a good way of looking at this is with a person. Okay, so this was part of the idea that came on the Saturday morning because I was thinking, well, what if your dream, what if the thing that you really want is a person. So now we saw with Srinivasa Ramanujan, the thing was he wanted to express the mind of God and what a beautiful dream that is. But what if your dream is a person, right? So I thought about this and I thought about like a situation with a man who has a fantasy lady or something like that or some dream woman that he really wants. So someone like, and I'll put her picture on the screen, Zsa Gabor, okay? 
Why do I think of her? Well, she starred in this film called, I think it was called The Queen of Outer Space. And I thought, yeah, that is interesting because that would be like, if you're running this energy really strongly, that would be your dream, right? Dream girl would be somebody like, like her who, you know, she lives on another planet, right? She lives really far away and what else? I mean, she has a difficult name, hard to pronounce, something like that. And what else about Jar Jar? I don't know. It's just someone who's very far away, this unattainable dream. Okay, this is far, very far away. Now, what happens in this instance where you've only really got Mercury here? I was thinking that imagine, you know, a person who has this and then they meet Jar Jar at the local cafe. And finally, the dream come true. She comes, she flies back home from outer space and she touches down and she meets, you know, Mr. Fantasy thinking over here, like she meets him at a cafe. And I was thinking that, you know, I reckon he'd be really deflated if he met her in person because she would turn up in sweatpants and, you know, she might be sneezing continuously and she might have some like spinach between her teeth or something like that, right? I mean, how terrible. And so imagine, he'll just be like, oh no, I thought you were, I liked you better when you were, you know, when you were just a fantasy. It's like, well, now you're real. And oh no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want this, you know? And it's, it's this, and Clive James has this wonderful thing where he says it's this constant temptation to be, well, he talks about it as being this constant temptation to be someone more dazzling. But in this case of fantasy, it's like, you know, you could have this situation where, yeah, th this person here just, just is so deflated and disheartened. They don't, one of the theories I have about this line is that the people who run it, they don't ever particularly want the dream to come true, is what I'm saying, okay? So that is completely different to a classic Saturnian. So someone like me, for example. And how I operate is very different in that I don't, I won't dream it unless I can have it kind of thing. Like my dreams will be practical in nature. You know, I, yeah, if, if I can't have it, I probably won't dream it. That's more how I operate. Whereas I think people like this, sometimes I think they always want the fantasy. And I think the fantasy is motivating for them as well. I think having a big dream motivates them to do the work. They want to work. Whereas a Saturnian, I don't have that because me, I'm just like, well, I'm always working anyway. Do you know, like I don't need motivation as such to to do any work because work is just happening that's kind of how i operate yeah but i i was thinking about this person uh who you know this highly mercurial person who always wants something more dazzling you know and but the disappointment that would be there like when you meet the person at the cafe right and they turn up and you know what was once sparkling is is now flat you know, I was thinking about all this and how interesting that is. Because, yeah, that is just so fascinating. All right, we're at the four, 14 minute mark. Do you know what? I think I'm going to wrap this up there. Although, I mean, there is more to say, but, but I think you can see this principle of how, how you draw this down. It does take work. It does take effort. It does take these incremental uh, actions over time. Okay. So you can't do too much at once. There are no whole numbers here. That's another thing that I realized. The other thing is that I realized as well, and this is very Saturnian of me, very, very Saturnian of me. And that is to say that, well, what's, what's a million, you know, in, in terms of making the dream happen, what's a million times zero? It's zero. Like it doesn't matter how big your fantasy is or how grand or how incredible or how, you know, and, and, and yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't matter. You can make that figure anything, but you times it by zero, you times it by no work and you've got nothing. 
And I was thinking about that on the weekend as well. And this is also interesting. The other thing I was thinking about just very quickly is because we're here with Mercury, I mean, we might as well. One thing I realized about Mercury and this concept of the fantasy thinking and this concept of, say, for example, you know, Zsa, Zsa Gabor, the queen from outer space, is that, you know, and Mercury, and Mercury, yeah, Mercury meets her at the cafe and how disappointing that is because she's very ordinary in real life. I was thinking about how Mercury is this kind of very tight circle that, that goes around quickly. And I think it gets bored very easily as well. So that's probably also why, you know, this, this fantasy thing is like, you would, you would kind of, you want the fantasy more. Yeah, I don't know, I was thinking about that. So the curve of Mercury, he's going around really small, whereas a Saturnian's curve is like this. It's far wider and it's far slower, you see. So even though a Saturnian doesn't dream in the same way that a Mercury person does, it doesn't necessarily mean that the dreams are less grand. You know, you look at Karl Lagerfeld, he's a classic Saturnian, and he earthed some incredibly beautiful things. And, and he, he created an industry. I mean, it was amazing. He revived something that was dying. How, how many people wanted really ultra expensive handmade clothes? Not many people did, but he made that cool. So yeah, there's something about when you're on a big curve and you're on a slow journey and you're not seeing results seemingly, but Saturnian can cover a lot more ground, actually. Well, Mercury is kind of going around in circles there. I had a whole, I mean, that could be a video in itself. I had a whole thing that I was thinking about on the weekend there. But the main concept here today is really to look at, you know, that million dollar dream to recognize that if you don't put any effort, you put in zero effort, zero times a million equals zero. And that was a big concept on the weekend that I had. And then down here, this house is just full of fractions. That was also interesting. It really got my mind thinking. But I hope this has given you some food for thought as well for your chart. Let me know in the comments below if you have ever yeah, especially if you're a Rahu in Pisces or if you're a Rahu in Sagittarius, I would love to hear from you in particular. What do you dream of and do you want it to come true? Or would you have that dreaded situation of, you know, finally meeting Jaja in the cafe and realizing, oh my God, no, I don't want that at all. You know, like something like this. I don't know. Interesting topic, right? But thank you so much for stopping by and... I look forward to seeing you next time.